record on this computer. All right, so we're recording. Um, all right, so let me just start. I'm going to be using this, um, mainly the iPad now, because I don't really have a section on rotating coordinate systems in the book, although I think I think it would be good to add one. So I'm going to try to do that. But um, so let's let's just basically think about it. First, uh, let's think about a rotation. So if you have an angle, what's a rotation uh, defined by? First, there's the, hold on, let me get, um, I have to get my pen. Okay. So first there's the axis of rotation. And then, and now conventionally, because most people are right-handed, we talk about um, uh, right-handed rotations. And so that means that we're going uh, this way. So it's, it's a rotation about the axis in the way that um, your fingers point if you uh, have your thumb pointing in the direction of the axis rotation. And then um, what happens to a particular point? Well, a particular point, let's maybe do that in green. Suppose we have um, a particular point here, which we'd call R and Um, and here also, when we're talking about an axis of rotation, we don't uh, often mention this, but it's also important to say what the origin of the coordinates is. And so mm -hmm. I'm, be, I'm going to be thinking in terms of origin of coordinates um, being a point here. I didn't draw it carefully enough, but that's the origin. And the axis is a is a vector that that um, goes through the origin, and so R is relative to that origin, and the change in R is equal to theta cross R. So this is how much R changes. Well, I should say d theta, I guess. So if there's a small change in angle d theta, or if there's a bigger change, then delta r is simply theta cross r. So this theta, this um, vector theta, the unit vector is just the axis, but the magnitude of the vector theta, that is uh, how many radians in uh, rotate in the rotation, hmm. and um, so so that's the that's the basic thing. Um, and um, so now, if we we can imagine. Um, coordinates uh, taken with respect to a rotating coordinate system and with respect to a fixed coordinate system. And um, I think for simplicity, we'll say that the origin of both systems is the same. And so for example, we might ima imagine, um, let us say uh, the, well, let's go for blue if it's the earth. Suppose this is the earth, then it's rotating about a certain axis here. And um, we can have axes that are fixed in space and time. And then the axes that, whether we on the earth think of as fixed axes, because we normally f are insensitive to the fact that uh, people on the equator are moving at a thousand miles an hour toward the east and um, that people on the North Pole, um, or at least if the North Pole is on the axis of rotation, I actually don't 
remember that. Um, we've got. Yeah, I think the rotate, you mean between the magnetic uh, north and the rotation axis? So you're saying the axis, is the North Pole on the axis of rotation? Um, I think they're pretty, they're very close. Yeah, that, all right. That's my, that, they're certainly closer than the magnetic pole. Um, anyway, so somebody standing on the ax on the North Pole then would just um, rotate. Uh, he wouldn't move, but he'd rotate uh, once a day. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so now um, let's let's let me try to figure out a sensible notation for these things. Um, uh, let's see. All right, well, I, 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 I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, thinking about that. So let's, let's just say these are the inertial, or that is to say fixed unit vectors So these are the ones that are sort of, you can think of them as uh, the sun's coordinate system. Well, not really mm -hmm. the sun's, but um, someone not rotating with the earth, a fixed coordinate system in fixed space time. All right. um, and then we'll talk about EI of T as, um, and these are also unit vectors, these are the uh, co co uh, coordinates or the unit vectors uh, uh, rotating with the Earth. It, okay. With Earth, if we, if we think of it, for, it, it probably is just as well to, to use the Earth as an example. Um, uh, okay, so now we can have a given point in space. So let's see, that's R. We can think of this point in space as being Ri Vi hat. And in fact, this would be Ri of T vi hat, um, where these then are the coordinates in the inertial coordinate system or in the fixed coordinate system. That's what I should say, the fixed coordinate system. And then there's the r of t, and this is an r of t, actually, this one. So now maybe I should use a different symbol for this. Um, all right, I'll just use R sub E of T. So these are the coordinates of the point in the Earth's coordinate system. And so these would be R E I of T, E hat I of T. So these, um, These, this would be the location of the point in the Earth's coordinate system. And um, so now what, what, what's interesting is what happens if one starts uh, differentiating. And um, so let's say we have the inertial system so this would be V of um, T. And this would just be Ri dot of T V. Oh, hell, I used V for two different things. Um, yes, 
maybe I, I should change the notation a little bit. Um, so let's switch to N. because V is also a velocity. So this yeah. would, oh, damn it. So we can think of all of the, of the velocity as uh, the, in terms of the fixed coordinates, it's um, Ri dot of T N, uh, N hat, where the Ns are the fixed um, vectors in the uh, inertial system. Um, and now we can also, I guess what I, what I sort of, um, forgot to say here is that we can consider R of T not simply to be Ri of T and, but we can call it, um, well, that's what I wrote there. It's, it's R of T and Re of T, these are the same point. And so we can write that as um, R E I of T, E hat I of T, but now these guys are rotating. And so now if we take the time derivative of this, then what we have is that it is an R dot EI of T times a fixed inertial vector, I'm sorry, times a rotating vector plus R EI of T uh, times EI hat dot of T. But now EI of T, if the system is rotating with a constant angular momentum, then this is um, theta, let's see. EI dot certainly is, hold on a second, let me come back to here. EI dot is theta dot cross EI. Um, actually, I'm, I worked this out last night, um, but I didn't, um, well, actually, I have the pages right in front of me. Hmm. It's this question of getting the notation um, Right. Um, let, 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 me, let me start over following these notes, which I think might be a little better. So, and I'll be repeating things, but that's probably good because if you hear something twice, you're, but you're going to feel, you're going to remember it better. So let me switch yeah, now definitely. to um, the change Delta R under a rotation, this is what I said a little while ago, 
it's um, theta cross r. And um, so if we have a, So we can have the, the a velocity then would be here. O, theta dot is omega. So uh, so um, the the speed then is omega cross r plus theta cross v. So this is the v of um, the. Yeah. See, this is why this notation is just so. Um, it's just critical to have the right notation. And is, does that come from the uh, cross product equivalent chain rule? Like when you, you took a delta R derivative? Yeah, yeah, but that, that's what I got. But the, the, the trouble is now I've got V for the, V for, damn. Uh, now I've got V for two different things, you see. And, um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I'll call that R dot, but let, let me try to, all right, let, let's, let, let's say this, R I of T, we can think of that as um, E I of T, R I, and um, this then is, the, is in the rotating system. And now I've got, um, right, so this is, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll put prime for the rotating coordinates. And so, 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 so these are the, these are the coordinates in the rotating system. You still have the um, your iPad screen shrunken. Oh, on my end. Good point. Yes. Um, so let's make that. That's in better. Fact, at the moment, why don't I just make it the whole? I guess that's about as big as it wants to get. Okay. Thank you. That was a good point. Um, so now. So this is the the vector. Um, in we can think of this this one here as the vector in the um, inertial system, I for inertial. And so the actual velocity um, or the ith component of the velocity. Um, no, no, I just stands for inertial. Oh, God. So this is R. So this is, I'm, when I put my hand down to draw, the damn thing changes. <laughs> Look at that. I think the problem, frankly, is that Apple is trying to make all of its software work like the iPhone, and they just don't care about anything else. So, so this VI is, may, I, maybe you have a suggestion as to how I can write. Um, with, is, is it moving every time you use your little pen? Yeah, it, see, it seems to be That's just weird. when I use the pen, it moves. So what do I have to do? I don't know, I was typing the letter R up there. I don't know. Hmm. All right, let's try it in this position. 
Um, is it in some mode where it's trying to turn your pen motion into letters? That, that may be. What I what I did, yeah. All right. So so I switched from this A thing to uh, to this one, and I think this will be better. Um, so V is R I dot. And um, so then there are two terms. There's, um, and now we have to sum over the different coordinates. J just sort of goes from one to three. Oh, those are J's, not I's? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an I, and this is I, and this is J. Okay. I means inertial there. Um, or fixed, maybe I should use fixed. All right, let's do that. Okay, so fixed. In the sense of in the fixed coordinate system. And um, mm -hmm. so that's the time derivative of this, which is Ri prime plus uh, Ei R prime dot, and these are J's. So these are the, these are the unit vectors in the Earth system. Now, E J dot is omega cross E J. Omega is theta dot. So theta is the, mm -hmm. the rotation vector and omega is its time derivative. So yeah, you said that's the, it's the, it points in the axis of rotation and its magnitude is equal to the number of radians. Per that's right. Per second. That's okay. Right. All right. Um, so we can say then that V, which is R fixed dot is equal to Omega cross EJ times R prime J plus EJ RJ prime dot. Prime meaning Earth's coordinate system. And another way of thinking of this is just to say V uh, fixed is Omega cross r and what am i trying to say here r plus well let's say omega prime this is apparent yeah it's it's omega cross r but see ej rj prime is also r so we don't need a prime on this. This is this is a. This is the vector r, and then we say we add to that. Uh, e j, r j dot, and now this then is the velocity. In, the maybe I'll put a prime on it. It's the velocity in the rotating system, or in other words, it's omega cross r plus um, plus uh, r dot, but in the rotating system, and and so I'm going to call that r prime dot so and now we can and, and, and we can abstract from this we can say that the total derivative of something is omega cross plus the derivative in so this is fixed this one is fixed and this is uh, ddt in the rotating system. I don't know if now I have three notations here, but 
that this this is the fundamental equation here that comes from this. In other words, the the apparent time derivative. So this is the apparent time derivative. And this is the real time derivative. Hmm. In, in other words, in the fixed system. Um, and so that then leads us, that then allows us to compute an acceleration. The real acceleration is d2r dt squared real. And so this is going to be omega cross ddt times omega cross ddt acting on r. And what does this give us? Well, this gives us an omega cross, omega cross v. And um, this thing is the DDTR. So this is, so to speak, a V prime. Um, and then this one that's actually, I, it's omega cross plus. So I need to insert some plus signs here. So it's omega cross plus and God, I'm being so in other words, I'm I'm using this equation here. D by dt in the fixed system is omega cross some D by dt of something in the fixed system is omega cross something plus the derivative of something in the uh, the time derivative in the rotating system. So you can just put in uh, like anything, like position, velocity, acceleration. Yeah, yes, I think so, within reason, yes. So we've got omega cross, oh goodness, I'm, for some reason, the, I've got this thing plugged in, but we're going into low power mode and I, um, I'll switch it to low power mode. I hope that's enough. So, um, I think I'm going to have to write this a little bit more neatly. So, so let me say here, this is omega cross plus d by dt. So one of these was omega cross, omega cross r. And so, so I made a mistake here. This is not a v at all. This is an r. So it's omega cross omega cross r plus, and now we can have omega cross v prime, I'll say, because that's d by dtr acting on r. And then this one that's d by dt omega cross r, but that once again is, well, that is two terms. So that's d by dt um, relative, so to speak, on omega cross r. So then there are two terms there. And um, And, and so that's, so, so we've done, we've done three of them. And then there's finally the term D2, DT R squared R. So this is the, this is the apparent acceleration. So what we've got is acceleration fixed then is 
um, acceleration in the um, rotating. Uh, so I'll put it up here on. So this is this one here. Let's. This thing is A prime. This is the acceleration in the rotating system. Then we've got omega cross, omega cross R. Then this term here, so let's, this gives us two terms. When the time derivative acts on R, we get omega cross V prime, but we've already got omega cross V prime. So now we have two omega cross V prime. And then we have the time derivative acting on omega. So that's omega dot cross R. So these are the four terms. And um, if I look, if I go to, Wikipedia, well, let me just go, let me, let me get a separate window here. And um, so I'm gonna move that there and then I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna move this on the screen. So um, let's see, what's a rotating coordinate systems, let me. And um, I think this is a good one, this one here. And so, so he, here is, uh-oh, what happened? I uh, just fell asleep, it looks like. Right, okay, we're back. So this expression here, is the one that I wrote in green. Okay, let's see, maybe we need to make this just a little bit smaller. So this thing in green is this. Hmm. So d by dt fixed is d by dt rotating plus omega cross something. Uh, so F is something in both cases. And now if we get down to acceleration, um, they, they wrote this thing backwards from the way I wrote it. So I, AI is my A fixed. So AI is A fixed. So we've got um, A fixed. A fix then is a rotating, which is my A prime. And yeah. then we have two omega cross V prime plus omega cross omega cross R plus omega dot cross R. So this is the thing that I've derived here. Now we can get the labels here. This uh, omega cross omega cross R is So let's, let's switch to black maybe. This one here is called uh, centrifugal centrifugal uh, acceleration. But of course, it's a point of view. You can also call it um, as, uh, centripetal. As, uh, I, what is the word, centripetal? Anyway, it's, it's um, the acceleration that a body feels that's perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Um, then um, this two omega cross V, this one is called the Coriolis. So this is Coriolis. And then the last term, this is Euler's acceleration. Um, 
And so if you have a uniform rotation, omega dot is zero and uh, it vanishes. So then um, I guess what we can say here is if we go to, um, uh, if we look in, um, we can look in terms of uh, my, we, we, we can think in terms of forces, F is MA. And um, if we go to the rotating system, then we have this A prime is equal to A in the fixed system uh, minus omega cross omega cross R minus two omega cross V, and I'm gonna put a prime on that, and then minus omega dot uh, cross R. And um, what we have here is that R is the same in both systems. And um, so now if we say F equals MA, so the absolute force is um, in the fixed system is MA prime if we're talking non-relativistically. And so then this is the, um, no, I'm sorry, MA prime, this is the force in the rotating system or F prime, so to speak, is MA prime. And this is MAF, that's the absolute force. And then there are these other forces, which um, people call um, plus F centrif centrifugal, plus uh, F uh, Coriolis, um, plus F Euler, where um, F uh, Coriolis, or I'm sorry, centrifugal is um, minus M, omega cross, omega cross R, and F Coriolis then is um, minus M, minus two M, sorry, minus two M omega cross V prime, and then um, F Euler is this last one, which is minus, minus M omega dot cross R. So these are the different um, ways of thinking about these things. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering who this guy, Lewis Hand is. Um, I once had a physics professor called Hand I don't know what became of him. Hmm. Anyhow, um, one advantage of this uh, tutorial that you've signed up for is that, um, you know, we, uh, I mean, you should talk as absolutely as much as you want. Um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, um, so the more you say, the better, I would say. Um, yeah, definitely. So uh, if you want me to try to explain something, um, something else. Uh, well, I had some follow-up questions on those, uh, like the Coriolis and centrifugal and Euler voice forces there. Right, what? So oh. you, you wrote out the equation of motion there, right? Um, what I mean, what does that look like then? Like, let's say I'm some particle that it, just floating out in space, and there's like those are all those fictitious forces are meant to what explain my motion in a rotating reference frame. That's right. Yes. In other words, um, in fact, that what what you just said was 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 very good. Um, that is, to, you said. Let's suppose there's some particle in space near planet Earth, um, and it's big enough so that we can see it. 
and it's acted upon by some force, then um, uh, what will be the uh, acceleration that, uh, that we'll see? Well, if we're out there in a spaceship and we're in an inertial coordinate system, the acceleration we'd see would be this, this one here, A fixed. But on the other hand, some astronomer on planet Earth where omega is the rotation uh, speed of the Earth, which I guess, um, uh, what is omega? It is uh, two pi divided by uh, 24 hours times 3,600 seconds. So this is, um, omega is that many inverse seconds. Um, that astronomer on Earth would say, oh, there's, um, a, uh, an acceleration, the real acceleration due to the force, and then there's a uh, centrifugal acceleration. Um, this one here, this is the centrifugal one. Um, this one is the Coriolis one. And then this one here is Euler's, but that would be zero for the earth because the rotation of the earth is pretty much constant. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what that's what you'd see. Um, now, one thing that um, one could uh, um, I see my notation here is a little bit sloppy. So let me try to fix this. This is a V. And we can, I guess, try to check the units. Um, acceleration is one over time squared. So that works for this and this and this and this. And now here, this has to be a velocity because that's a one over time. And here, this is one over time squared because it's the time derivative of an angular velocity. So that's how the units work. Um, one thing that, um, one might, I don't know if you want to do this, um, but one could say, well, uh, this was all done uh, at least when we went to F equals MA, we um, were doing things non-relativistically. Um, what about this whole uh, derivation here? This derivation, I don't think, there was any statement as to what the velocities were, whether it's re relativistic or non-relativistic. So presumably all of these equations are true for velocity, acceleration, and position. They're presumably just mathematically correct. So they would apply in, uh, in special relativity as well. Um, but then what you have to um, do when you go to special relativity is you have to keep in mind what, um, what uh, the actual, um, what positions and times are in different inertial frames. And in particular, for the kinematics, you've got, um, something that uh, a, a four, four velocity here, that's C times the ordinary velocity divided by this square root. And um, momentum then is that same, is very simple. It's, it's this four velocity times the mass gives you the momentum. And, um, and then when you go to, um, the generalization of Newton's law, well, it's, um, it's m times du d tor is the force. And um, uh, a d by d tor is um, a, a, 
brings in a one over the square root because d tau is the square root times dt. So you'd have to make these changes uh, for, for that. And then of course, when you've got a general relativity, there might be some other subtle changes. Um, um, I don't know if you wanna pursue that. I, I haven't thought about this enough um, uh, for me to sketch it um, right now. Um, but um, let me try to remember, what are the other topics that you want to cover? And um, uh, I think uh, following up on rotating reference frames would be like Lagrange points, because those always oh, that's kind right. of- That's right, you wanted to talk about Lagrange points, yes. Um, right. And of course the L2 point is, has been particularly, of interest because that's where the Planck satellite went and that's where the, in fact, that's where the Planck satellite is and that's where the uh, Webb telescope is. And they're both at L2. And um, uh, all right, so we can, we can discuss them next Monday then. I'll, I'll focus on Lagrange points for next Monday. Um, what were the other things that you had in, had in mind? Oh, uh, well, the other thing I wrote down in my email was about um, cosmic rays, but honestly, I, I still have lots of follow-up stuff on like, yeah, rotating reference frames. Like in my work, we work a lot with um, quaternions and oh, like really? I only know, yeah, because they have to deal with rotations. So we use a lot of unit quaternions to rotate spacecraft because it's an easier way to uh, command it than Euler angles. I see, I see. Well, of course that, that's um, that's uh, uh, basically the group SU two. Um, those are basically the Pauli matrices. Um, you you might um, want to take a look at this chapter on group theory, and yeah, go to rotations. The 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 section on rotations. And then the the um, then there's the, the, there's the group SU two and some things about these and um, but that's interesting. I have I have not seen how I know people do use quaternions, which are essentially just elements of SU2, um, uh, or uh, effectively the Pauli matrices. Um, and you know what the Pauli matrices are, right? Yeah, those are those three two by two matrices that define yeah, right, rotations. Right. Yeah, are right here. Right here. Yes. Um, so, um, I have not um, used them the way people use them, uh, where the people you're talking about use them. And uh, my understanding is that in, comp in uh, that computer engineers use them um, a great deal to do graphics. Um, yeah. And um, so let's see, can you recommend a good reference? Because um, if we're gonna talk about it, I should, um, find out, I mean, I know about the group SU2 and the Pauli matrices, but I don't know how they're using quaternions. Um, so the, I just have a surface level, level knowledge of it, like enough that, um, for my work. So well, I just read up on Wikipedia and watched some YouTube videos on it, but basically what you do is you have like your, um, like a, a vector with your IJK components and you just construct a unit vector, which is your axis of rotation. And then you multiply that by sine uh, of the angle you want to rotate about that theta. And then you divide it by two. And then like the real component is cosine also of that. Oh, theta sure, sure. Theta. Yeah, yeah. That That's, um, in fact, that's one of these equations here. It should be one of these. Where the hell is it? Um, 
Well, one of somewhere in here should be. I know that that that's that's an equation that's used a great deal in um, in quantum mechanics uh, for spin one half systems. Hmm. I maybe we, maybe it was in here. So let's see. Yeah, there it is. This is the equation you're talking about. Yeah. Right. So this is the two by two rotation uh, of an angle theta acting on uh, act. Uh, this is the right form for acting on a spin one half object. Um, what I'm puzzled about is why is why that's particularly relevant when you're dealing with um, ordinary objects. So, all right, look, I'll look into it and, um, but, but that'll be lecture three or session three or tutorial three. The next tutorial is gonna be Lagrange points, right? Mm -hmm. or, or would you rather do quaternions next? Uh, I think Lagrange points have been in the back of my head longer because I remember I did uh, an assignment in undergrad about them and like where we basically had to sketch the potential between two stars in a binary system and like I, I got it to work on my program but I'm like looking at this and it's like not super intuitive <laughs> like right. where the different points are like I know what is it like L4 and L5 are along the geometric center between the two bodies. And that just, but then there's like L1 or whatever is in the center of mass point. And then there's like, some of them are stable, some of them are unstable. So yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So we'll discuss Lagrange points next time and then go on to applications of quaternions. By the way, there's also a, a section on quaternions, but- um, Oh. Hmm. All right, so why don't we just stop now and um, um, we'll get together next time at 3.30 on Monday. Okay, sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye.